Hello everyone and welcome, Dom here and in this video we're going to do something really cool. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Neo Disco track with Absolute 5. I'm going to deconstruct what I've done but I'm also going to play some sounds live. We're going to have loads of fun, let's get started. First of all let me give you an idea of how the track sounds like. So as you can hear, there are lots and lots of elements in this track, many instruments, so let's break it down and I'm going to show you how I also perform these instruments. To begin with, let's start with the drums. So I'm going to solo my drums here and I'm going to show you what I've done and how I treated the drums, how I came with this sound. So let's start with our verse, let's listen to just the drums. So I've soloed all my drum elements so we can have a closer look, okay? Let's listen. So as you can hear, it's stripped down, it's a little bit less busy than the chorus when we get to the chorus, but there are a few elements that come in in the second part of the verse to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's start with a kick drum, and I'm going to show you the whole philosophy about building and layering the kick drum. The kick drum basically consists of three tracks, right? So we have the Retrolog sub, which is my sub for the kick. We have the kick knock, and we also have the kick click, okay? So let's just listen to these three and let's see what we've done here. Okay, so if you wanna really listen what's going on, make sure you wear headphones because we're going to talk about sub frequencies here or listen to a good pair of studio monitors. So let's start and I'm going to start with the subs. And the subs, you might be surprised, but it's not a sample, it's Retrolog, okay? So this is a preset that I've created with Retrolog, it's called Dom Ultra Sub Kick and it's a very, very simple preset. Feel free to copy the settings, but basically for tracks like this, I always make sure that my sub kick is customized and I want to make sure that it really feels the low end, okay? So it's just a sine wave, as you can see here, tuned really low and I have a quite short decay time, no sustain, a little bit of release, nine milliseconds of release so that we avoid any clicking. And I have a cutoff for my filter around 400 Hertz. This is a sine wave, so you don't necessarily need to filter it. But what I've done here is I've added my filter cutoff to 400 Hertz and added a little bit of resonance because this gives me a little bit of a bitey sound, okay? And then I added a little bit of distortion. Now the trick that I've done here to add a little bit more attack and more punch is I've assigned the filter envelope, so this guy right here, to the oscillator pitch. And I've added a little bit of modulation and this way I'm turning the filter envelope into a pitch envelope essentially. So let's have a listen. Okay, so this is basically my sub and you will see that once I remove this, everything just falls apart. Okay? This brings everything together, it's really, really big and Retrolog is great for creating these kinds of sounds. Now, let's move on to the next layer which is the kick knock and for this one, I'm using one of the instruments that are now in Absolute 5 and this is Backbone. Now Backbone 
is the holy grail, in my opinion, when it comes to drums layering, because it's designed to do this and much, much more. But in this case, what I'm doing is I've taken this kick drum. Now, this kick drum comes from the Dance Floor Tech House library in Cubase. But what I've done here is I've decomposed it. So basically, I've separated the elements of this kick drum to tonal and noise, because what I wanted is to completely shape this to give me the knock of the kick drum, okay? So I'm just getting this sound. So I have the tonal element here that adds a little bit of depth, but what I've done, as you can see, is I've changed the envelope quite a bit so that it's shorter and it doesn't clash with my sub. And I also have the noise element, which is what I actually need more than anything else to get that knock. And Backbone allows me to do this really easily, really organically, without resorting to EQ that can change the phase and can create all sorts of artifacts. So I much prefer doing my layering in Backbone, and I'm going to come back to this later because I've used Backbone a lot for the drums, okay? So this is the second layer. And the last layer is a click. And again, I'm using Backbone. I'm using a kick drum sample that I've decomposed. But in this case, I'm just using the noise element. See, let me unmute the tonal element. So that was the original one. But I only want to keep this noise element because I want my kick drum to click. Okay, again, Really, really powerful, really easy to use with Backbone. As you can see, I have no EQs. I can completely change the sample. I can, of course, filter it, pitch it up and down, all these things. So now let's listen to all the three elements of the kick drum, and I'm going to bring each one of them one by one. Knock. Click. And of course, now if I want, I can blend them, I can change the volume, maybe I'm going to automate them later on. But for now, this is the kick drum. Now let's move on to the snare, okay? And for the snare, my main sample comes from Groove Agent. And this is a sample from Future Past Perfect. Again, that's included in Absolute 5. So let's have a listen. So this is my core sound, and then I'm layering this with a snare top wide layer. And this is a backbone instrument as well. And here I've layered three samples. I'm using backbone as my layer machine. So let's have a listen just to this one. So what have I done here? I've taken these three samples, which are basically noise samples and a tonal sample, and then I've duplicated this noise element, see this one here and this one here, and I've panned them left and right. So this one goes left, this one goes right, and this way I'm achieving a really wide sound. Now you might think, well, how is that possible? If it's the same noise sample, then why does it sound stereo? It should still be like a mono sound, right? Because it's the same sound on left and right channels. But here's what I've done here. This is the noise sample, the way it is, like as normal as it came from the decomposing function. Again, if you wanna learn about decompose, we have a dedicated video in this channel, so make sure you check it out. But essentially, I'm using the normal noise sample, and then I duplicated this here, but in this case, I've resynthesized it. So I get a completely different sound. Let's listen to them. Original. And resynthesized. So the two of them together sound really, really wide. Now in the chorus, I also have this snare attack instrument here. So this is another layer and this, I use it only in the chorus. Okay, let's have a listen to it. Again, this is a decomposed sample. I just tweaked a little bit the decay of the pitch envelope just to make it a little bit more snappy. 
Okay, now let's move on to the claps, okay? Because this is very, very important for this kind of neo-disco sound. Let's listen to this clap and let's see what I've done here. This is, no surprises, again, backbone. Let's have a listen. And this actually comes from the Backbone library, and I have layered quite a few sounds here. So if we listen, number one, just a bit of a transient, and a more kind of drum machine-like clap. So it sounds like this. And I'm layering this with another clap, which is an analog style clap from Backbone again. Let's have a listen. So together. Now another very cool thing that you can do with Backbone and I've done it in the second part of the verse is this trick. Let me show you. This is the reverse sucky snare layer. And for this one, I'm using Backbone to create these kind of sounds, you know, that they go like that you have like a little bit of a sucky intro before the actual sound hits. And it's so easy and intuitive to make these sounds in Backbone. Let me show you what I've done here. As you can see, I have two layers, right? I have this clap layer that if you see, I've reversed it and basically it sounds like this. Okay. And then I have this layer here, which is a snare layer. But what happens is very, very clever. I can just trigger the reverse sound and then when I lift the key, the actual snare sound will play. So, see that? So, why is this so brilliant? Because it's so easy to program, you know? I don't have to go and, you know, just create the sample first and then try and align it on every hit. Let me show you what I've done. If I go here and you can see this MIDI part, you will see that because this note ends exactly on the beat, I get this sucky reverse snare sound super, super easily without having to commit anything to audio. You know, just by using this trick in Backbone, you can layer the layers that are not off because basically that's what you need to do. This is a normal layer that's just reversed and this, I've just activated note off, which means that the note will be triggered when I lift the key in the note off event. Super powerful feature. So if we listen to this now, let's bring in the other drums. And the other thing that I want to show you is the acoustic drums. The acoustic drums, I wanted to add them as an extra layer for beefiness, but also a little bit of an organic feel because for this neo-disco sound, I like layering some acoustic drums. So for this one, I'm using the Groove Agent 5, the kit, and more specifically the Lightning preset that I've kind of modified to make it a little bit more dead. So I went to the mixer and I've turned down the room microphones to make sure that the sound is very, very dry, very much like disco, okay? The original disco drum kit sound. So let's listen to how it sounds with the rest of the arrangement. So pretty, pretty cool. And then I have another layer of acoustic hats that's again from the kit from Groove Agent 5. Again, all included in Absolute 5. Let's have a listen. And as you can see, I have some layers here, some crashes that come from the Future Past Perfect expansion. So don't forget Future Past Perfect. You can use it as complete kits in Groove Agent, but you can also use it as separate samples. That's very, very cool. So let's move on to the chorus now and let's see what else I have here. So I have this clap wide layer, which is again, a nice backbone instrument. Again, I want to get more excitement in the chorus, so let's have a listen. 
a hat layer. Again, I'm using Backbone here. I've re-synthesized this hi-hat to give it a little bit of a moving quality. If you use resynthesis in Backbone, it really opens up a brand new world of possibilities and sound design. So that's why I resynthesized this hi-hat. And just before the chorus, we have this Tom's synth. And this is again from Backbone. And with these toms, because they're decomposed, I have the option of having the tonal element being tuned, depending on where I play on the keyboard, but the noise element remains the same no matter what, which means my toms are going to be much clearer, much more organic, and they won't have these weird artifacts when you pitch up your noise elements, which is not really pleasing sometimes. Sometimes you might want this, but in this case, I wanted this to be very, very clean. Okay, and I can also turn up the noise element if I want to. See that? And before we move to the bass, let's listen to what else we have here when it comes to the drums. I have some percussion here. Backbone. some synth percussion and some more toms. Some really big toms actually. And as you can see, these are some monstrous eight layer toms, okay? We have eight layers to get these big toms. But they do sound brilliant. So this is the drums deconstruction. I also have some more samples here from Future Past Perfect. Let's have a listen. So really, really cool library. And for this kind of music, it's perfect. So let's move on to the bass because we have some really cool things going on there as well. And again, the bass is a very, very important part of a neo disco track. Okay, so let me show you because I have loads of layering here as well. I'm gonna show you how I've created the sound and then I'm going to play it live for you so that you can see how I approached the performance side of this. So we have four layers for the bass and I also have a drone bass here. So this is for the intro. Let's check out this drone bass. And this is a really straightforward sound. This is the sound that I've created for this drone bass for the intro. Uh, I love creating sounds from scratch on Retrolog. It's such an easy synth to use, but it has all the options that you might ever want. So this is a very simple sound. What I have here is a triangle wave to get the low end, but I also have a multi sawtooth wave to give this sound a little bit of width a little bit of an open sound. So let me show you just with the triangle wave. And this is when I add the multi oscillator. And as you will see, I'm automating the filter. So let's have a listen. So again, try and give a little bit of movement to your sound. Even just a simple filter sweep will make a world of a difference. Now let's go to a very interesting bit because here we have quite a few layers for the bass. So let me play this bass groove for you and I'm going to explain after this what kind of layers I've used for this.
what do we have here? Let me open the tracks that I've already performed and let's dissect the sounds. The first sound that I have here is, of course, you guessed it, a retrolog, and this is the subs, okay? As you see, this is a preset that I've created. It's called Tom Funky Square Sub, and the name says it all. You can copy the settings. Just remember, for every track, the subs are really important, so make sure that they fit with your track. In this case, I'm using a square wave, and let's listen to how this sounds in isolation. And, I mean, Retrolog is really fat, okay? This is just a square wave. I've added a little bit of filtering at 80 hertz, no resonance, just a touch of distortion, a touch of tube distortion, and a touch of envelope for my filter. And that's pretty much it. Really, really cool. Now, next we have the electric bass. And again, this is included in Absolute 5 now. Here I've used an MM bass. I think you all must know what kind of bass this must be. MM, you know? And I've also added a little bit of processing. You know, you can have the DI sound, but we can also have the amp and effects channel blended in. And it sounds like this. And as you can see, this is the DI. And then I added a little bit of compression, a nice amp that gives me some really nice solid low end, the DI driver, and a little bit of a graphic EQ. And you will see that I'm not really focusing on the low end here because the low end is taken care of by the sub from the Retrolog. I am focusing on the mid range. So with this and the sub, it sounds something like this. Now, what do I have here? I also have another layer. And that's a slab bass. And you will see that I've basically copied these tracks. I played the exact same part on all of these instruments, but for the slab, I only, I muted everything else and I only left these notes that I want to accentuate with these slap notes. So it sounds something like this. For the slap, I'm using the Halion Sonic Electric Bass VX. And as you can see, I'm using the expression maps here and I've added a slap expression map for this bass. And it really, really makes a big difference. It gives the sound a little bit of a funky element. So, I really wanted that element there. Now, what is the other sound that we have here? And this is again Retrolog, and this is a sound that I put together. And this is a kind of analog bass sound. Again, with this one, I'm not focusing on the low end, I'm focusing on the mid range. Because this will give me the attack. So, all together, let's have a listen now. Oh, I forgot to say, there's also a little cowbell here. Let's have a listen to this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I had to add that. So this is again Backbone and uh, it's decomposed so I can play, you know, on every key and it will give me a different note. Okay, so this is the bass. And of course, in the verse, it's a little bit more sparse.
Okay, now let's move on to something else. I also have some guitars that I've actually played. They're live guitars, these ones. You know, just to add a little bit of a funky element to the track. Okay, now let's move on to the synths, the keyboards, all the interesting sounds. And I have some really, really cool things to show you here. Namely, this sound here. Okay, this sound here. Alright, so I'm not gonna show you how I made these sounds yet. I'm going to leave it for last, but let me show you some of the keyboards that I used. And the first keyboard that I used is the Amped Electra. Beautiful instrument, really organic sounds. And in the arrangement, I actually have the Amped Electra to play on the right channel. I'm panning it because I have some more sounds there. But just so I can show you how it sounds, I'm going to pan it to the center right now. Let's have a listen. And this instrument basically carries the harmony of the track, okay? This is the main instrument that carries the harmony, which is really simple, but it also has some chords to give you this kind of neo-soul sound, a little bit of a funky sound, so... Okay, so we have a B minor, seventh, then... A C over D, or you can call it D sus. As a classical musician, uh, D sus means something completely different to me, but, you know, this, so this is C major over D, but this gives us a very, very funky sound. And then G major seventh. So this is a dominant chord, it's a dominant 7, F sharp 7, with a sharp 9. Again, it gives us a very, very nice, soulful flavor. Let's play this live. So you get the point, it's a beautiful sounding instrument and for tracks like this it can give you a super nice funky element straight away. Now I have another sound here that I want to layer this Amped Electra and this is the Retro Roads and you might think that this is a road sound but actually it's Retrolog and this is an EP like sound that I've created in Retrolog. So this gives me another layer, a little bit of a more rich sound when I layer it with the Amped Electra. So I'm going to copy the MIDI part here and now I'm going to pan them like I told you. So I'm going to go to the right channel with the Amped Electra and for the Retro Roads I'm going to go to the left channel. And let's listen to both of them now. And by the way, in order to get this really, really, 
you know, kind of metallic sound with Retrolog, I added a cross modulation oscillator here. So this is what gives me this ting. You hear that? It's a very distinct sound. Now, what else do we have here? I also have an acoustic piano and the acoustic piano comes from the Halion Sonic 3 library. This is Eagle and it's great if you want to get this really bright, punchy piano sound, especially if you turn the tone a little bit to the hard side, okay? Let's have a listen. So I like this hard sound for this specific track because the piano will give me this kind of a, almost like a stabby sound, you know, I'm not using it for soft passages or I don't require too much, you know, subtleties when it comes to the dynamics. So the option that Eagle gives me to go all the way to hard, it's beautiful and it works really, really nicely. Let's have a listen. So now I have a really rich palette of sounds, really big, you know, kind of stabby sounds for my arrangement. Now let's move on to some more synths. Here I have the stabs and these are some stabby synth sounds. And again, this is a sound that I put together in Retrolog. It's really... know really nice and thick and as you can see I'm using three oscillators I have two singles and one multi and I think the special flavor for this sound is the actual pitch envelope because as you can hear it goes like you know it it does this kind of one it's kind of like almost almost like this like I hold the pitch bend but it does it automatically for me and the way I've done this is I'm using the envelope 3 here to modulate my pitch. So basically what this envelope does, as you can see it here, it's assigned to oscillator 1 pitch and oscillator 2 pitch and it creates this kind of bendy effect. And the reason why I'm using envelope 3 is because it has a little bit more control compared to the ADSR or the filter envelope. And of course, I'm also using this for the filter and the ADSR. So I want to use this one to have a specific pitch envelope for this sound. This is a very important sound for me for this track. So I wanted to make sure that I get it right. Speaking of important sounds, I have another cool sound and this is the candy strings. This is another retrolog sound, but this comes from the sounds of soul expansion, which is great for funky sounds for pretty much what we're doing here today. So this is the candy strings. And this is again a very important sound for the chorus because this is what also enhances the harmony. And it's like a long sound that keeps everything together. And then when we add a bit of sidechain with the kick drum, this really creates a nice pumpy effect. It moves really nicely. And then I have the in the mirror strings that I'm using as well in the chorus. And these are these kinds of sounds that are really simple, but they're so effective. And sometimes you go through presets, you know, you go to pads, the pads category, and you find all these weird sounds and it sounds nothing like a pad. Well, this is a beautiful warm pad that works. It doesn't get in the way. It feels everything really nicely. And that's why I like the sounds of soul expansion because it's filled with super useful sounds. But then I have again a very, very important element. And these are the disco style strings. And this is something that for this kind of track, it, again, it was a very, very important sound. It's a staple for neo disco and for disco actually. And they sound like this. Okay, 
very typical disco string sound. Now let me show you how I've done this, how I came up with this sound. So as you can see, just two layers, but let's try the first layer. The first layer is the studio strings from Halion Sonic 3, okay? And let me show you what happens here. Okay, so let's open my key editor. And as you can see, I've only programmed a few dynamics here, you know, with my expression, just to create this kind of crescendo here. You know, very subtle, but it's needed. I don't go too far because we have to also keep in mind that this is a pop track, so I cannot be too, you know, generous with my dynamics. They need to be heard because there's going to be vocals on top of it. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in this track. But what I want to show you is we have three layers. I have the chamber strings for layer one. I have the full strings spiccato. And I also have the chamber strings spiccato. So it's a very dense sound. So when I hit a note, I get the initial attack that I want, but then I have control over my expression in the long notes. So I can still have this really sharp attack, but I can also have control over the dynamics. Now, why did I add another layer here? I added another layer because in Halion Sonic, we also have this patch called Large Strings VX. And these really sound great for this sort of thing. Let me play them. Okay. Let me show you how I did that. As you can hear, the sound is very bright. I added quite a bit of EQing here. It's a little bit over the top, but for this kind of arrangement, trust me, it's needed. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. So let me show you my key editor here. And this is what I've done, see? So this is exactly the same notes. They're played in octaves, but there's a little bit more going on here because I'm using the expression maps for Halion Sonic. Don't forget anything that has key switches in Halion Sonic or any Halion instrument, you can access it through the key editor in Cubase. So as you can see here, what I've done here is these notes are spiccato, these notes are tremolo, then I have more spiccatos here, and then a glissando down, which is a very, very typical disco sound for strings. Let's have a listen. So, you know, this simple patch from Halion Sonic works incredibly well for this arrangement. And now if we layer them both together, you will see that we have a fuller sound, of course. Okay, disco. Now let's listen to some ear candy sounds, okay? The first sound that I want to play for you is this one. So this sound is basically the vocal that we heard at the very beginning. And I've dropped this into a Halion instance. Halion 6 can do so many things, but this time I use it as a sampler. So it cannot be simpler than that. I just dropped the sample into Halion and then I went to my zone. And what I did is I added a bit of a filter, you know, to make the sound a little bit darker. So we are not exactly sure that this is the vocal. It sounds more like a rhythmic sound. And then the other thing that I did, I went to my audio warp settings. I turned audio warp on and I have the mode in solo. And I also turned on the format function. So now I can change. the foreman without changing the length of the sample. It's really, really cool. So this is how I came up with this sound. And of course I have some processing on it. I have a vintage compressor 
to give it a little bit of bite. I have the auto pan plugin to make it go left and right. I also have a multi-tap delay. And last but not least, the revelation reverb to give it a little bit of space. Now, the next sound that is really interesting and I had a lot of fun creating is this one. <laughs> So what is the sound? It sounds like a vocoder, like a talk box, but let me show you what it is. It's actually Halion 6. And again, what I did was I took the vocal, a sample, you can drop any vocal sample, it will sound great, I can guarantee that. I dropped it into Halion 6 and I used the wavetable synthesis in this case. Again, if you want to learn more about wavetable synthesis, we have quite a few videos on this channel. So check it out because I'm not going to go too deep into this today, but it's actually very simple. It took me like three minutes to create the sound. As you can see, this is my wavetable and this is my sample. This is my vocal and I'm using the spectral voiced mode here. And the next thing I did was I went to the zone, my wavetable section. And what I did is again, I changed the format a little bit to make it a little bit darker. And let's turn this into 3D. So you can see exactly how it looks. So I can see my wavetable here. But the other thing that I did that is very, very easy to do in Highland again is I went to my matrix here, my modulation matrix, and I added an LFO, this LFO, to my CC controller. And this is controlling my pitch. So now I can create this interesting vibrato effect. <laughs> And I always like to look at the wavetable while I'm doing these things. Beautiful, beautiful sound. And seriously, it's so easy to create these kinds of sounds. You'll be surprised. Check out the Wavetable synthesizer in Halion 6. It's really amazing. And of course, the ever so important vocals that I'm going to play for you right now. But I hope that now you have a good understanding of how you can use Absolute 5 to create a neo disco track. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have loads of fun with Absolute 5. Make some great music. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. So hard to make it work I solve a